film has definitely changed my life. You know. It's wow. Really, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's back up a bit because a number of people who are going to be listening and uh, seeing this won't have seen the film yet. You've got one of those premises <laughs> premises that you just people can't stop talking about in all sorts of in, you know in all sorts of ways. Uh, why don't you? Uh, what was your pitch like? Why don't you explain to us what the what the premise is and how you went about pitching it? Well, it's the buddy movie, you know, the bromance gone wild. It's <laughs> taken to its its most logical or illogical, as the case may be, you know, extreme. It's called Hump Day. It's called Hump Day, and it's these two dudes who were best friends in college, um, you know, sort of joined at the hip, and uh, whose lives have diverged dramatically since then. It's about ten years later or so. And one has become this sort of nomadic, you know, wild artist type who just, you know, just goes around the, the world, basically, and um, tries out everything and lives a completely freewheeling lifestyle. And the other guy, you know, sort of took the straight and narrow, you know, conventional route and has a wife and a house and a job and they're trying to have a baby. And so his wild buddy just sort of shows up on his doorstep one night, literally in the middle of the night, out of the blue, and... Uh, and it's this weekend, this crazy weekend that they have together, and they really want to reconnect, and they also engender this incredible competitiveness in each other. And it's also this identity crisis that they each, you know, as they see each other's lives, and you sort of size up your own life. And so um, the guy who's now the the husband and the, you know, the, the good husband and the good employee, he suddenly, you know, remembers his wild side, basically, and um, wants to not be a conformist, and is, you know, they really want to break out, the two of them, and so they end up at this crazy party, and there are all these artists there, and they're all going to make these movies for Hump, which is this actual festival that The Stranger, our, our weekly newspaper, has um, every year, and it's this amateur porn festival, and so they decide they're going to do one too, you know, and it's the end of this crazy drunken party, and so they decide that the the only like cutting edge worthy thing for them to do would be for the two of them, two straight guys, to have sex on film. And the next day they can't back down from it because they'd be wussing out, you know, and you can't do that if you're a guy because that'll you know, lose face. So it's pretty crazy. And so it's the that's you know, basically the weekend that ensues and how is Ben gonna tell his wife and what you know, how are they actually gonna do this thing and that's the movie. Very good. Now, uh, let's talk about not not to uh, uh, jump to the climax too quickly. Let's talk about what where where do you where do you see the focus of the comedy in this movie? Because it seems to me that the entire thing is about the the humor in awkwardness. I mean, it's it's just it's it's a bit like you know there's kind of a I don't know if it's in the zeitgeist, but it's a bit like The Office and all these kinds of you know comedies that are about the. <laughs> the awkward situations people find themselves in and how they kind of address it. it is that what you were going for? I mean, what, what was the, since, since the actual filming is, is like, you know, comes near the end if it comes at all, what's, what's the bulk of your movie about? Well, it really is, um, people sometimes get surprised when I say this, but it really is true. I wasn't setting out to make a comedy, you know, like, like Judd Apatow makes a comedy, yeah. you know, okay. he's looking for the jokes and playing for the laughs. Um, I knew that it would, be funny. There would be parts that would be funny, but I all my films have sort of equal parts, or at least you know there's there's some equation of both drama and and comedy, yeah. and um, and but all the humor is derived out of authentic human moments and very recognizable you know moments. So it's about friendship, but it's also about marriage. I mean, there are, there are these scenes with Ben and his wife Anna that are um, you know women really relate to because they really relate to her and they relate to the relation they, the relationship that they see and these little white lies that we tell each other or the way that we try and paint you know just the 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 ways that we relate to each other it's 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 the recognizability that i think you know it's funny because it's true yeah. you know kind of idea um and we were always playing it straight never look you know never never looking for the joke or the laughs but really just like dead on serious you know earnest um yeah. you know and and that's where the humor is derived from, and there's a lot of yeah. That's exactly right, and yeah, that's a, that's a perfect corrective. It's not a comedy like a Jen Apatow comedy. There are no jokes in it, but yeah. it is. I mean, people are laughing in very uncomfortable ways throughout the film. And by the way, I thought your actress that played the wife was fantastic. I mean, I, I thought she was great. Now, you know, I wanted to talk to you a bit about your earlier film too. I'm a friend of Sean Nelson's, and I found it absolutely fascinating. My effortless brilliance, but. 
I, I, just sort of taking that movie into account along with Hump Day, it seems to me that you have a particular take on men. There's something about, you know, like I found the, the wife incredibly believable and realistic. I've got four brothers. I have a lot of guy friends, obviously, and I don't... I, just do not see anybody getting into that kind of situation. Now, I realize that comedies are meant to kind of push, you know, push things to their um, logical conclusion, but can you talk a bit about your particular take on men, or do you think you have one in these last two movies you've made? Well, I know they, I've started to sort of box myself into this, <laughs> into this pigeonhole of, of making movies about men with my last two films, but it, I, I've developed a very unusual or unorthodox way of working. I'm not the only one, certainly, who, who makes movies that involve improvisation. All of the dialogue in my last two films was improvised by the actors, and I don't just sort of, it's, it's not a super loose situation where I just say, okay, let's make a movie and say whatever comes to your head. I, I give a lot of direction and we have a lot of structure, so it's a very detailed outline. I just want, I'm going for a real naturalism, a real sense mm -hmm. of authenticity, and so I know that they're going to come up with lines that are much real more real sounding than anything I could write for them. But I, I also started with, the starting point was was an actor that I wanted to work with, and in the case of My Effortless Brilliance, it was Sean Nelson, and in the case of Hump Day, it was Mark Duplass. Um, and they, because those people happen to be guys, it ended up being movies about men. But like, uh -huh. like Lee says, I don't make a movie, you know, he often gets told, well, you make such good movies about women, your women characters are so great, and he gets all prickly and says, I make movies about people, I make uh -huh. movies about people. And that really is true. I, I have, I pride myself on being a pretty, you know, um, observant, uh, examiner, you know, a close observer of humanity and of what makes people tick. And I'm fascinated by that, and and I have a back, you know, a documentary background. I think that comes into play a little yeah. bit, and just my, and also as an actor, and you really have to be a study of humanity, you know, if you're if you're going to play. But here's a, let's too. let's throw the uh, the ball back in your court. No two women would end up in the situation that these two guys are, right? Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's something about this kind of one-upsmanship business going on. <laughs> Talk to me about that. Your take on men. Is that a personal experience of you know your experience with men that? You, you sort of have that take on them? Oh, sure, absolutely. I mean, I've been around the block a few times. I'm, 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 I'm no spring chicken. I've definitely observed a lot of uh, men and a lot of men relating to each other over the years. And, and one of the things that does fascinate me is, um, yeah, if two women, I, I think friendships are really different. I mean, not that women can't be competitive, for uh -huh. sure, you know. And the fact of the matter is, if two women are in that situation, they probably just would have gone, you know, it wouldn't have been as hard for them, wouldn't have been such a struggle if they really decided for some reason that they needed to try this, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it was a real struggle for two straight guys, I think, because there's a lot of um, anxiety about, you know, the, the relationship between a straight guy and gayness is very interesting to, one, to me. Yeah. It, it, interesting one to me. They, they seem particularly attached to their identities as straight guys, and they need everybody to know that, you know, and they need, to, most of all, for themselves to be reassured constantly that I'm not secretly gay for some reason. Even if they're progressive and they're happy if the whole rest of the world is gay, yeah. they need to know they're not gay. So it just creates, it's an automatic, you know, beautiful sort of scenario for that, a certain kind of awkwardness and tension, um, and then combined with that competitiveness that they seem to, you know, certain, certain guys seem to engender in each other. You know, it's it's just a perfect recipe for awkwardness and humor. <laughs> yes, indeed. Dramatic tension. <laughs>